Hello guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin from Sugar MDs, and today we are going to talk about how to work out for diabetes, the best workouts for diabetics. Okay, like we are going to now summarize what we are going to talk about today, and I'm going to try to go by the order. So if you do not want to listen to one part, you can jump to the other part easily if you want to, but I would recommend to listen to this entire lecture that will benefit you maximally if you have diabetes and you want to work out to help your diabetes, you have to know these things before you jump into any exercise. I do that mistake sometimes. I go into things without really looking uh, into those things in detail and then I end up regretting it and as a diabetic patient I don't want you to have the same mistakes so we're going to talk about number one why and how to work out for diabetes so we are going to talk about why and how to work out for diabetes so how does really working out help how do you transition from a, a sedentary lifestyle to an active lifestyle with daily maybe workouts? So do you really need a medical evaluation before you start working out? What is a structured exercise program? And what are the types of exercises that any diabetic can do? And what are the safety precautions? And we are going to talk about the intensity of exercise that is needed for diabetics. We're going to talk about the duration of the workouts and we're going to talk about the frequency of these workouts. So what are the optimal frequency, intensity and duration? Very important. Again, uh, we're going to touch base all this. It's going to be a comprehensive video. So let's jump in. So basically, if you have diabetes or not, if you have physical activity in your life, if you exercise or work out regularly, then you are actually preventing to become a type 2 diabetic. Uh, so you may be eating carbs uh, because you're non-diabetic, or you may be diabetic and eating carbs. Eating carbs is nothing wrong with it as long as you can control your blood sugars reasonably. Uh, so, and of course I'm talking about healthy carbs here. Um, but the exercise is the ultimate best thing you can do for yourself. If you cannot exercise at all, then you have to really, really cut your carbohydrates because then that's going to spike your blood sugar significantly. So no matter what age you are, uh, no matter what your physical abilities are, we can find you a way to exercise so you can actually improve your life, improve your diabetes. So when you exercise, what happens is your body burns glucose. The glucose is typically stored in your muscles, in your liver. Uh, as a result, you, you have to burn these glucose that is stored. If you do not burn the glucose, then that's going to turn into fat. So, and if you keep eating carbohydrates and you're not really burning them, then you're going to gain weight. Um, so, of course, if you're eating fat and you're not burning that fat that's also going to cause so so even if you're on a keto type of diet if you're not exercising at all and you're eating a lot of fat that can also cause weight gain too it's all about how much calories you're getting in and how much calories you're burning out so also when you are working out you're actually using your muscles and your muscles get larger and bigger and better and your metabolism gets better uh, so your body becomes more efficient utilizing the energy and if you're not fit and you're not exercising at all your body becomes very efficient in turning everything into fat so that is how you teach your body how to really utilize the energy resources so again the diabetes will uh, be prevented with exercise and will be significantly improved with the workouts of many different ways and we will talk about right now about how uh, to transition from a sedentary life to a workout life right the biggest challenge is a lot of people are so scared because they do not exercise at all most Americans uh, I don't know which country you live uh, uh, while watching this video but in America we do not exercise much at all uh, so uh, the, the problem with that is 
that uh, you know you become more and more sedentary and it's harder to transition to workouts it becomes a big challenge and your body becomes tired so a lot of, a lot of times people, patients will come and tell me that they're so tired to exercise well because they don't exercise that's why they're tired so it's like a vicious cycle that people cannot get out but it is very important for you to start slowly and build up and you can do that by just listening to your body if you're huffing and puffing and you're like having palpitations and uh, excessive chest pain and shortness of breath stop don't force it too hard so you have to know your limitations um, think about what you have done last time and how long ago it was uh, work with your exercise uh, therapist or your doctor to find a starting point and then gradually increase it. You can put small goals. You don't have to be too passionate about it. As long as you, you increase your goals in time, before you know it, you can be a marathon runner. Even if you have not been, if, even if you haven't run for like months and months or years and years, if you start walking and then fast walking, brisk walking and jogging and then running, you can develop that. It just requires a lot of patience and, and, and discipline, and, but definitely that can be done. And of course, if you have been very sedentary and uh, you have been diabetic for a long time and you're above age 40, 50, uh, you may want to get checked medically to make sure that you actually do not have an underlying cardiovascular disease that can put you into a heart attack situation. Now, we doctors, we uh, look at the risk factors, uh, we look, look at your symptoms, and we decide to run some testing if we need to. So you can always ask your doctor if you are a patient that requires medical evaluation individually for you. Again, at SugarMDs, at my practice, we do that all the time. Uh, the simplest thing you can do is an EKG or sometimes a stress test uh, and over just simply discussing with the patient, see what their daily activities are, what are their symptoms, how many stairs they can climb without problems, how much blocks they can walk without problems. Those are the indicators of how uh, overall a patient's health and fitness status is to begin with. So developing a structured exercise program is very important. And the most thing that most things that people know or they think they know can be actually wrong. And uh, one thing that a lot of people ignore is the warm up. So anytime you try to do an exercise, I always recommend patients to start stretching. So start stretching if you're going to lift something, if you're going to do resistance exercise. And if you're doing a cardio exercise, what we recommend is to warming up for three to five minutes, which means starting slowly and gradually building speed to whatever your comfortable speed is. Uh, so your heart rate will slowly go up and that's also going to prevent the fatigue. Remember the first five, 10 minutes of cardiac, cardiac exercise or aerobic exercise or workout is the first five, 10 minutes is the most miserable time for most people because they generally hit it hard, they start very fast, they think they can go 100 miles an hour uh, from the first uh, minute. That's not the way to go. That's going to hurt you, that's going to hurt your muscles, that's gonna cause a lot of aches and pains. Now, of course, uh, at the conditioning phase, you bring your heart rate to a comfortable heart rate uh, that we will talk about, uh, and then you slow down the last three to five minutes that will prevent the accumulation of lactic acid, that will prevent the post-exercise fatigue. Uh, so that's very important that you slow down, gradually bring your heart rate down, and then stop the exercise or your workout. Just in our previous video, there are some safety precautions every diabetic should know, right? So basically, you should check your blood sugar before, during, and after. Uh, if you have a CGM, that's great. Uh, remember to warm up and cool down. Remember stretching. Uh, and uh, remember that your blood sugar can go down even up to 24 hours after your workout. Uh, and then consult uh, a physician if you are very sedentary and if you're not physically active at all uh, to see if you need to be uh, uh, checked out for certain cardiovascular problems. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the intensity and frequency and all that good stuff, you know, common questions like how many times should I exercise? How long should I, how long should I work out? Um, and how do I know how much of um, how much intensity that I'm in and so forth and let's talk about that right now
So how do you know how intense you're exercising? So basically, there is something you can do. This is especially true, true for relatively younger individuals whose um, you know, maximal heart rate could be near 200. Uh, but uh, typically, uh, I would say on a scale of 6 to 20, uh, the moderate intensity exercise is around 12 to 16, okay? So if you're at the 18 or 20, that's really high. So how do you know really that you're really doing intense or moderate intensity exercise? So you multiply um, that intensity of exercise. Let's say you want to do moderate intensity. That's 12 to 16 out of a 6 to 20 scale. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's say you want to do 12 or 13, multiply by 10, that's 120 or 130, that's your heart rate. So if your heart rate is 120, 130, 140, that's the zone where you call it, we call it moderate intensity exercise. That is the best zone for most diabetics, and that's, that's the reason for that is the higher the intensity, the more difficult it is, and most patients with diabetes it is just hard for them to do that. Uh, for athletes, great. Yeah, they do that all the time. But if you're a regular person, uh, you know, just, just a normal person with diabetes, we do not recommend doing really very intense exercise. They can cause injuries, problems, and so forth. But if you can do that intensity, keeping your heart rate at 120 to 140 range, if you're older, I would say 120 to 125. If you're on the younger age, like less than 50, maybe try to shoot for 130, 135, provided that you're not getting chest pains or excessive shortness of breath and so forth. Now, another way you can actually tell how intense you're actually uh, uh, working out, if you are not able to talk to someone at all, uh, that you're breathing so heavy, <laughs> that's, that's really intense, right? So you can tell that's intense. Uh, but if you are able to make short sentences to someone, oh, hey, hey, how are you? Uh, hey, I'm okay, how are you doing? <laughs> that's like, that's not too bad, right? So you can still talk, uh, but, but you're, they can tell that you're actually busy working out, so they're not going to bother you too much. So that's like a moderate intensity. So you can look at your heart rate, you can look at, you know, what you can do when you're exercising. Um, and then, and then the really mild intensity is, uh, let's say you're jogging, you're just walking around, you're, you can have a conversation easily, uh, you don't look like you're in distress or anything, then that's, that's mild, really. Uh, now the duration depends on uh, the intensity of exercise. So we recommend around 150 minutes of uh, moderate intensity exercise. So that can be like 30 minutes for five days. Uh, so if the intensity goes up, if you're like doing really athletic stuff, uh, then up just 60 minutes in a week is okay. Uh, but most of the time, as I said, most people cannot do that. So we say at least 120 minutes, the preferably 150 minutes a week. Uh, and we prefer at least three days. So if you want to do like a, like a long workouts and you want to do, let's say, 60-minute exercises, uh, 50, 60 minutes, uh, but you, you can only work out for three days a week, you can do that. Uh, or you can be someone who just want to do short exercises like 10-15 minutes uh, two times a day and that's like 30 minutes a day and five days a week you can do that as well so as long as you're making that 150 minutes a week uh, of uh, short bounce or, or long stretches uh, they're all okay so it doesn't have to be uh, one certain way so whatever your lifestyle is whatever you can do uh, if you're too busy with kids and family, just sneak in, do 10, 15 minutes something, you know, get your heart rate up, and that, that's fine. Uh, if you can get away from your family and friends and you can get away for an hour, uh, just take your time and do whatever you can. That's going to add up. So 150 minutes, moderate intensity, heart rate around 120 to 140, provided that you have, don't have significant medical problems or you can, you can, you can do it in a, at a reasonable um uh, uh, comfort level. Again, uh, the frequency uh, depends on um, the, the the duration and intensity. So you're looking for 150 minutes of total time. You're looking for moderate intensity exercise, which we talked about what the moderate intensity feels like. 
uh, or, sh or, or in your heart rate, how you feel uh, with the moderate intensity exercise. And the frequency totally depends on your schedule. So as long as you are making the 150 minutes uh, a week, I don't care how you do it, just do it. <laughs> okay, now we are going to talk about uh, the the cardio, the uh, the aerobic exercise. So as we discussed, starting the exercise uh, with a low intensity and then building it up is very important. So warm up is very important. So uh, I'm assuming that you stretched. The stretching part I skipped, but I'm going to start with uh, just this warming up period. So you don't want to just jump that intensity or resistance to too high and just start getting like really, really passionate about this. The first minute, don't do that. Cut back down and just, you know, just start taking it easy. Uh, what I typically do, I increase the resistance to, uh, you know, maybe one at a time every minute. So I start with like resistance two maybe and then go to resistance three by third minute and then four, maybe fourth minute and then five in the fifth minute. Now, I also want you to pay attention right now i can talk to you yes you can tell i'm exercising but i am able to talk to you and i do not have to cut my sentences into short but now uh, let's assume that i have done three to five minutes of um, the warming up uh, assuming you know just trying to shorten the video but i'm going to now in increase my intensity to more like a moderate intensity in the moderate intensity I'm going to increase my intensity right now. In the moderate intensity, you may not be able to make uh, the full sentences. As you can see now, I feel like I have to breathe as I talk instead of making the full sentence at a time. So I feel like I have to breathe more often. Now, another thing you can do, if you have a reasonable uh, heart rate monitor, Basically, you can monitor your heart rate, and as we said, you know, your heart rate are divided by, or say, 10. So if your heart rate is 130, you divide it by 10, your intensity is 13. So as we discussed, 12 to 16 is like a moderate intensity exercise, and that's where you want to be in the conditioning stage, where this is the bulk of your exercise. The first three to five minutes is warming up, the last three to five minutes is is cooling down, and then the uh, the majority the in the between is your conditioning part. Now I'm going to jump on and get a heart rate. Now I'm going to show you my heart rate right now, and we'll see where we are. Okay, as you can see, now I am at moderate intensity. As you can see, I can not really make full sentences but I can still talk to you. Why this is not really a high intensity exercise? Because I can still talk, right? So, and when I look at my heart rate, as you can see, my heart rate is around 130, 140 range, and I can still talk. So I think that's 145. So this is a good range that I can actually keep my heart rate up like this for another 20 minutes and then I'll start cooling down in the last five minutes. So, this is a good way of measuring it actually. Uh, you don't have to necessarily put all those whole sorts of hooks if you don't rely on the uh, heart rate monitors on the machines. You can use definitely that and that'll help you a lot. Now let's talk about how the really intense exercise will look like by going intense here, okay? Now, I'm getting pretty close to intense, and I think my heart rate is around 160, 170 range, and I don't want you to do that. I think if you're athletic, you can, but you start coming out, of course, it's better to do moderate intensity and then 
start counting down the last three to five minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, uh, for a lot of diabetics who have physical limitations, older individuals, uh, I will show you now uh, what exactly you should be doing uh, if you're not able to run, uh, treadmill, uh, elliptical. A lot of people have joint problems. They have uh, physical limitations that they just cannot do things. Uh, uh, just, just because we tell them to do, they are just not able to do it. A lot of people have hip problems. They can't really move their certain body parts and extremities. Okay guys, so for those who are not physically very capable, if you're not able to stand or walk, I'm going to show you a few exercises that you can do at home. So basically, I'm calling this a sitting march. So you're going to just march with your legs up. So yeah, that doesn't really uh, look like it's very uh, uh, the effort intensive, but if you keep doing this, this is actually going to uh, start, uh, you know, uh, you're gonna start feeling this. So keep doing that, it's just a matter of time. And you can just entertain yourself with some music or something like that, or you can get some rhythm or whatever you wanna do. Uh, just, you know, just keep doing that. That's going to be a great exercise. The next thing you can do, or you can use your arms if you cannot use your legs at all. And what you can do is you can make a fist and bring it up and down up and down so you can do that one up one down one up one down if you want to use a little bit of a weight in your um, uh, arms uh, not too heavy because you want to make this a cardio exercise so you want to make sure that you can keep this up for at least you know 15 20 minutes so your heart rate can go up a little bit and uh, the third thing that i want to show you is um, basically going back uh, behind a chair and if you have a balance problem especially if you're not able to uh, stand well uh, what you can do is um, lift your leg up and hold it there for a while and uh, for maybe five minutes that's going to strengthen your uh, leg muscles on the other side and you can do that for the other leg as well and repeat this procedure as often as you can all right so um, the next thing that I want to show you um, is basically like uh, almost like a preacher curl. You can basically do this uh, and repeatedly, and you can, you can have two pounds, three pounds, five pounds uh, if you want to use uh, weights, but you don't have to use weights, especially if you're not strong to begin with. And you just need to do that again repeatedly as many times as you can try to do at least 15 to 20 minutes and if you get tired or you're bored you can just stop doing that and then resume that maybe in the next hours again uh, these exercises look small and unimportant but actually it is it is doing something some sort of physical activity is better than nothing so as a result i would suggest strongly suggest that you perform the exercises if you do the uh the march if you do the curls and if you do the fist uh, these are the things that can actually help you uh stay a little bit more active and yes these are going to take a little bit longer time than a moderate intensity exercise so you may try to do that maybe uh, at least uh, 45 minutes a day uh, then you will hopefully see a noticeable result in your blood sugar levels now I get a lot of questions, what type of exercise should I do? Should I do a, a cardio workout? Should I do a resistance uh, training or workout? My answer to that is, is both, uh, because you have benefit from both. So when you have a better and bigger muscles, basically you are um, able to uh, utilize more glucose when you exercise so in a shorter amount of time you can burn more calories your metabolism is typically higher so as a result gaining weight potential is much lower as well also being strong overall helps your balance and stability as a lot of patients with diabetes tend to have balance problems and that also is an important factor to prevent injuries um, so the cardiac exercise is also very important and that has to be mixed with um, the resistance training 
Although you have to be careful, especially if you have diabetic retinopathy, diabetic eye disease, like sometimes bleeding vessels at the back of the eye can be a problem if you are trying to lift too heavy. Again, as we discussed, you start slow, you try to lift in carefully, and make sure you get your eye, eyes checked before you start any sort of heavy lifting, and do not go try to lift the heaviest thing. Start slowly, see what you can do with an eight repetition. Uh, do not increase your, um, your weight unless you can comfortably do a weight eight to 10 times uh, at a time, uh, for three times uh, so that that's like a rule of thumb uh, and that will also prevent injury again start stretching start warming up start lifting light and then gradually build up again if you're in florida or new york uh, we are definitely available uh, just call us um, give us a thumbs up for this video uh, and we are going to bring up more and more videos please support us subscribe share these videos uh, so that everybody can benefit from it. So again, we'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.